Will this beautifully restored 1970 Porsche 911 Outlaw bring singer money or will it wind up in the P-Car Market chum bucket? Let's find out. Nerd! Big Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. All right, guys, uh, let's get to some predictions. We got some interesting cars on the list. Michael D., what's the first one? What is the first one? It is a car. Uh, let's give a shout out to Yuri Sanakis. Uh, absolutely hey, Yuri. Great friend, great friend of the herd. Yuri sent to us this 1970 Porsche 911 Coupe. It's a 911 T Coupe on P Car Market. Our car is equipped with a three liter twin plug. Um, and so Yuri sent it to me. And then I went to log in and add the car to the list. And lo and behold, it's a it's the exact same car I had already selected. So uh, Yuri and I were on the same page. Um, this particular car, JP, is painted in a very attractive Bahama yellow. And uh, JP, I'll lean on you for the enunciation of Mukileto, Washington, M-U-K-I-L-T-E-O. Oh, it's in Mukileto. Look at that. Mukilteo, Mukilteo. I can't pronounce any town in Washington. Have you noticed that over the last three years? Oh, they I are. Butcher- I, look, they're really difficult. Uh, yeah. Puyallup, Mukilteo, Squim. They're all spelled totally yeah. differently from how they're it, is, yeah, Does Alice Cooper arrive in all the children's classrooms and go, it's actually Milwaukee? <laughs> Anyone? You no, need the little, right. uh, you need the crickets. Uh, there you go. Yeah, there thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So no Wayne's tough World room, fans out room. there. No Wayne's World. All right. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. All right. What, anyway. what did the bad guy drive? What did uh, Christopher oh, walk in? No, it was Wayne's World 2. Wayne's World 2. Wayne's World 2. What did he drive? What was yeah. it? Oh. Come on, mental. You don't he know. A, he had a Cabro, if I'm not mistaken. He had, a, he he was, had a 964 Speedster, black on black. Uh, yeah. Yes, because he was he yeah. was he was taking Tia, Tia, Tia Carrera Tia around. Tia Carrera out in the Carrera, yeah, getting a little yeah. Carrera. All right, in the, uh, all right uh, back to the car. Sorry, deep had to had to hop in. JP, there with that one. I listen. Just this is one of those. I don't want to say typical, but we have seen so many of these since we've been doing the show. Um, this is just a modified three liter SC built to be like a seventy four RSR. So it's got you know. Um, rest of the world case, twin plug, ported, and hit, ported uh, heads, ported and polished heads, titanium retainers, GT3 main bearings, Male pistons and cylinders, 10.5 compression ratio, um, Darty cams, PMO carbs. The, the car just, JP, it, it's just like the who's who. I love that it has the old F body steering wheel, but a thicker rimmed version of that. Um, it's squared off, uh, looks like deep sixes um, all the way around. Uh, racing buckets. It's got like a big Wevo tall shifter in it. Th- this is the car that there There are people that like to own Porsches. And then there is a whole nother like caliber of people that like to drive Porsches. And I like to say about Porsche versus Ferrari is that most of the Porsche fan club love to drive their cars. Whereas the Ferrari guys all just want you to know they own the car. <laughs> um, but th- this car, John, if you just go down the list, it has all the stuff in it that we'd want in our own cars, except this one's already done. So to me, it looks like a nice build. It, it seems to me that this would have exceptional performance. I, I'm guessing this is a car that's putting 300 horsepower to the pavement, not generating it at the crank. Um, suspension is done. Uh, it looks like a very well thought out uh, build. I like everything about the car except the exit of the exhaust. I don't like the way that these pipes come out from under, uh, from underneath the, the center of the car. But other than that, that is me nitpicking to the nth degree. Um, everything on this is what we'd all want to have for ourselves. So JP, I just lob it right back over to you as you peruse the pictures and you you look at what we're what we're seeing here. Um, is there anything you would pick apart about this car or would you just say this is a really nice one? And the climb on this car, the, the uphill battle for this car is going to be who built it, um, and uh, and is the is P car market the right platform for the car? Um, I'm guessing he wanted to protect his investment with a high reserve that he could not achieve on bring a trailer. Thus, he brought the car 
to peak our market where he could dictate the reserve and uh, make sure that his baby wasn't stolen out from underneath him. That's why I believe this car is here. But, you know, I'm speculating like all the rest of us are. So, JP, what do you see as you look at this car? Pornography. Look at this. Look, yeah, I mean, yeah. the, the pictures are okay. Uh, it's funny. I know exactly where the picture was taken. That's a road that I literally learned, to, one of the roads I learned to drive on. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, I got my driver's license probably – five minutes from where this, uh, where these pictures were taken. Um, mental, can you get to the picture of the clock on the dashboard? Oh, I was so going to go there. You Cause I'm like, all right, where these? do, where do I get one of these for a my nine fourteen? Uh, give me tag? a handful of seconds. And, and while I'm getting no. to that picture, you have some instructions from a, uh, a watcher right now about purchasing this car. You might want to catch up on. Uh, okay, I will look into that. But I mean, th- look the 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 gauges on this thing are spectacular, and the watch is something. I mean, the clock is something that you would have to send to our smiths to get worked on. Look I, at this thing. I want this. What is oh, that's that? hot. So that's bad. Hot. Yeah, that's hot. It looks like have you ever that's seen fantastic. one of those? Yeah, Dave, no, I've, I've not. never seen no. that. No, but that's that brilliant. That I is that. spectacular. I, I missed that photo, so thank you, uh, Mental and JP, for catching that. That is that is absolutely brilliant. That's something, JP. This is I, I'm such a shit. If I had that and I put it in my 911, I'd put the stock clock back in and keep that for my next 911. That's how cool that is. Right? Yeah, I wouldn't sell the car. I would just or would, yeah, if you sold the car, you would take that out and would not let keep, it go. I would with take it. that yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. I would, absolutely. I would, keep that for, I would. That part is too cool to sell to some schmo that's gonna be hammering me on price or whatever. So I would keep that. But it's badass. I love it. So wait a minute, I'm uh, I'm missing. Oh hey, wow. there's, a, there's a there's a young lady oh, yeah. in there that's Look saying that. uh, you have permission to buy this car. Yeah, because she <laughs> wants me to put it in her stocking. How's that? What what? Just I'd be fine she with must that. have a she big stocking. So good. Uh, <laughs> she would rock rolling around in this car. Holy crap! And uh, and uh, according yeah. to the listing, our but uh, one of the nerd herd Tom, he's all over this one. The owner did this all themselves. Yeah, that's like your flying Hawaiian buddy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Dave Kialoha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is, looks like something like of Dave's caliber. You know what I mean? Like a really nice, well thought out car. And you know what else is interesting? Apparently, our Smith has built clocks for 911 custom what? commission. Oh, dude. oh come on. All what right, are so you doing, Anthony, bro? And. Anthony, you have to send uh, some images to John so that we can post them for you. And I assure you, you'll get a half dozen orders just from this show. I promise you. Actually, that. I need one from so, a 914. So hook me up. I dude. need one from. I want one for my my wide body Carrera. If you can build uh, any custom clock, it doesn't even have to look like that one. I would love to have something unique in my car that if you could paint the face of my clock or do something with a, a, a second hand to make it look like a a stopwatch timer from the era. That is badass. Thank you, Anthony, for sharing that. Great, great pickup. Wow, that is uh, that is definitely uh, uh, an opportunity for you, Anthony. Uh, In fact, yeah, Kevin's yeah. already he's already got people Everyone's in the nerd like, herd asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we don't have a show anymore now. We're just gonna hang up. Some and, uh, Anthony, we'll be uh, selling them on our Etsy page here. Anthony, I would like to reserve uh, spot number one for your next clock. Okay. Uh, Anthony, I, I have a clock for a 67 Porsche I can send you that I will use. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mental, you're so good. <laughs> yeah, but we're not talking about the two little stopwatches that go on the dash. That's no, 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 no. Someone the, someone yeah, gave no. it to me. Yeah. Uh, this was something. Somebody actually gave this to me as a lemons bribe. Nice. They gave me, yeah. they had found one of those, and it's it's in parts, and it needs work, but I'm, I'm told it works. And I could send it to him and have something really unique and cool from someone that yeah. we all really, really like. But yeah. let's get J- back to this super awesome car that clearly everyone, even... Rochelle is a fan yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, this thing go, is Yuri. absolutely sick, dude. Um, right. Wait, you're not really, you're the one guy out of the crew that's not really an air-cooled Porsche guy. This, this is just outside my realm. I, I, I'm going to say this. All y'all with your, new, with your new clocks and your new Porsches <laughs> are going to really enjoy them. <laughs> along with this guy who's still going to own this car in a few days. <laughs> um, so you all, can, you all can drive with yes! him and uh, enjoy yourself up there in Washington. But yeah, unfortunately, I, I think this car is going to suffer from... Um, go nowhere. Go, go nowhere disease. It's going to suffer from the fact that he, he obviously spent a lot of time and care and attention and probably money to put this car together with just the most minute of details that all of us can appreciate, but I don't know how many people can appreciate. And certainly 
probably not for the price that he has in mind. Granted, this is the platform for outrageous buy it now prices after the fact. So if he wants to put a number on this build, um, he probably will. Uh, but I don't know if everyone else is going to, but I guess that's that's what we're here to this find out. This car certainly looks as nice as any Dave Key Aloha car. I hope I'm not, uh, yeah, I mean, d- this car yeah. is... This car is It's up there. It's up there. Up it's there. it's in that yeah. it's in that rarefied air of build. JP, you and I have seen a bunch of cars where they just slap some parts on. Yeah. Um even Rami's friends down at RMC Miami have sold some zingers, but this this looks like an exceptionally p- well put together car. Uh, well, with that you know. said, what do you think it's going to bring? It's got some bids. All right, so John, I'm just going to give you this. That that's a $50,000 motor at minimum in mm-hmm. the back of that car and this build without the motor is a $150,000 car. So I'm guessing there's over $200,000 in this car. However, I think that I agree with Wade. I think Wade went there first, but I, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't contest anything he said. Um, I believe that that P car market will find $150,000 for this car. Uh, but I think it will fail to sell at that number and wind up in the chum bucket for Somewhere between one hundred and eighty and two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which I know is a pretty wide spread, but but I think they're going to miss the mark by you know a good thirty percent. So I will give you a hundred and fifty grand, but I don't think that's what the car is worth. I just think that's what the result will be on this platform. I just want to clarify that. JP, where are you at? Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, or do we want to do two numbers on this one? Do we nah, want to do? No, nah, uh, I This is look, right. I. It, I, this car is as nice as they come. It, it's a tough time of year. And what we always say, I've said it a million times, said it even with Dave Kealoha's car. Dave Kealoha has a name. He's known for building cars, but he's not super well-known. He's not, you know, he, he's not Singer. He's not Gunther Works. He's not, uh, you know, Kelly Moss. He's, he's, not, yeah. he's not one of the big builders. He's a one-off guy uh, that ha- that's built a little bit of a name for himself. This guy is, I don't know who this guy is. Um, and if this is the only marketing that's going out for this car, obviously it's going to hurt. If the only eyeballs that are seeing this are people that are going to P car market. A lot of times when you see these really higher end cars, higher end builds, um, even if they don't have a name, they're sold, sold by like someone like, uh, you know, the guys up in the Northwest up there in Portland, there's some big sellers that, that do other marketing more than just the platform itself. Uh, and so, you know, they can kind of create a buzz around the auction. Um, I think this car is going to get more than a buck and a half. This is definitely like if it were on BAT, if, if this were, if this car were Dave Kealoha car, this is definitely a two and a quarter car. Um, yeah. But it's, but it's not going to get there. Um, but it, even though it should, this is not one of those cars where it's like, okay, it won't get there uh, because it's not worth it and what an idiot. Um, it's just unfortunately because no one knows him um seems to be a buck and a half is kind of where unknown builds go uh but i will give it a i'll give 10 grand over that and say 165 911 and hand it off to wade hold on one second wade (laughs) yeah Uh, i want to just tell you because i i went right to my number and i didn't give you the data our car is sitting at ninety six thousand dollars on 11 bids and it closes tomorrow so with that in mind and the bids that you've heard where are you at, Wade? You know, I was higher and now I'm lower. That's a long way to go for even 150000 But Thank I, you, Wade. I, I appreciate that. But with that being said, I had a number in mind because, look, we were off last last show by like 20 or 30%. <laughs> so I'm sitting here thinking That's like... Us. I, That's I, not us. Well, this, I, I apparently not because everyone has deep pockets and they're not afraid to not only bid high but also encourage these sellers to not take their ridiculous bids. So, I mean, this car is probably going to go for like $188,000 on P car market. That's my guess. Yeah. It's All still right. not going to sell. They're going to want right. 235000 for it. But I, I mean, they're, they're, they should they should think about 180 at least if that's what it's going to get on this platform. It depends on why they want to sell it, I guess. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like they're raw. Yeah, I mean, if it don't like 235 would be 185 would be giving the car away. Um, yeah, yeah. And I would definitely say, yeah, yeah. The, just do not sell it for 185. Um, if this thing breaks 200, I'd be shocked. Again, we're we're saying that the car is worth well over 200. I think uh, Deeb yeah. and I definitely agree on that regard. But the platform time of year and just people not knowing if they don't know the builder, it's hard for them to go. 
yeah, I believe in this car. Uh, when people are paying over $150,000 for an old hot rod 911, they want some kind of, they want some kind of, you know, not for necessarily a warranty, but yeah. a provenance. They want it, they, they want a history. They want to know that, okay, this thing's backed by someone that I've heard of. I'm not just buying some, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to, for people to shell out this kind of dough, uh, for a, you know, for a project car, even though it's definitely worth it. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we were wrong in this one. If this one does break the 200 and something sure. thousand dollars and, and then does get a sale, that would be great. And that would be great for the seller. Uh, and it'd be good for P car market. And, you know, it's not to say P car market has done it before, but I've definitely seen a lot of FDSs on P car market this week in particular. They have had some stupid cars on their P-car- side. Peak our market week. is just is just more hit and miss than the other platforms. It really so, is. So it is a bit of a roulette thing to see. Like if this car gets two hundred, does it sell on peak our market? You know, again, if this guy wants two fifty and he gets to two thirty five and they miss, yeah, uh, that that doesn't do anybody any favors. But the uh, thing is, yeah, the man, thing is though, if he went to be if he took his time and did the BAT thing, they would give him a two hundred thousand dollar reserve at least. Um, this car definitely is worth that. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I, I I see them maybe even giving them a higher reserve. Um, I think BAT would take the shot on a car like this because it is that good. Uh, but and they, I think it'd be right for them to do it because that's John, the platform where we'd probably bring the money up. You're you're using an analysis of the car and the mm. idiots that make these decisions at BAT don't analyze the car. They're analyzing the name and the fact that this guy doesn't have a name is why I don't think BAT awarded him a reserve he wanted to put to protect his asset. That's why I led with that. That's why you think so, it's in peak so, market. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, so we so you, a, and I, we you and I know you and I know Porsches, and we can look at this car all day long and go, that's a quarter of a million dollar bill. Boom. Like, just mm-hmm. five minutes of analysis, and we know that. The, the kid at BAT that's reviewing this application mm-hmm. can't look at those photos and tell you that. I don't know, man. I, I, I agree with you to an extent. I think Porsches kind of sit in a different area and I think it winds up going up the food chain. And I think someone would look at this and, and say, yeah, they want, I mean, they want a $200,000 car on their platform. That's a lot of, they are going to make that huge, uh, that huge. They don't. Well, I mean, five I know grand, it's only max. five grand, but still it's the top max, of the, yeah. it's the top of the top of the line there. Uh, mental. We didn't get a bid from you yet. Sorry. I just want to point out this exhaust. I would love to have that taped to the roof of my bedroom. For obvious reasons, that is just beautiful. I don't know. Um, Why does Deep not like that? What's wrong with Deep? Oof, that I is just, just don't like so weird, dude. I, I, what are you talking about? I don't about? like That's, the exits. I, I just don't like the exits. Uh, like that. I, love, I love everything about that. That yeah. is just well-crafted. Mm-hmm. I think this car it's, is going to be expensive, it's and it's going to fail to sell for a different reason. What we've seen over and over again on this show, going all the way back to that 356 Outlaw, Dave Kilo's car, all of these cars, these very niche uh, fashion-built cars are very personal. And yes, while it is easily a two and a quarter build, someone who's going to spend two and a quarter build, they want their own two and a quarter build, and they're just going to have one built, or they're going to build it themselves. I'm going to say this car goes for one thousand or uh, one hundred ninety-seven thousand and fails to sell. Ross Church has, says the clock came out of a Russian MIG. Is that true? No. Oh my He's god. Just, Oh, it says, oh, Set never mind. The seller, says yeah. the seller. I That's apologize. That's freaking awesome. That means right. you could probably get them on eBay for like 80 bucks. Sorry, uh, Anthony, you're out of business. That's not going to, your your business model just crashed because you could probably <laughs> buy those for nothing. Uh, you know, East block, old war uh, equipment. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. You, you, you just find somebody that lives near a Russian Air Force base, yeah. send them a case of vodka. They'll go steal all the there watches you, you want exactly. for you. Now, uh, our next car we have. Well, hold on, un- hold we- on, hold on, bro. We haven't got to the next car yet. Yes, uh, I was going to let you know that we're having ten- Technical problems. Uh, Deeb's keep dialing back in. So, I, okay. but, he, but now Sorry, he's back. I fell off. I apologize. Yes. <laughs> uh, your audio's off too. There, Michael Deeb. Everybody's hanging it's, out. It's just warming up. You can hear me in a minute. Yeah, we get we uh, right now. You've got the what we call in everyone racers the tube of mockery going on because yes, it is not you. using your regular. All right, deep. Stop talking so- until your audio is good. Um, hey, uh, look, I, I did kind of want. So since we're still talking about this particular Porsche, I did kind of want to mention. Did you guys hear about the uh, the hybrid nine eleven that was announced today? The I, new, I yeah, not. I mean, we're looking at all this kind of old school, badass, you know, stuff. We can see your search screen there, mental. You might want to take it off BIP before you. All right, there, there we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all the porn that you're watching in between shots. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh, so Which the, was the exhaust on that car, yeah. 
Yeah, Deeb, your audio, your mic is not on or something. Um, Testing can, one, two. Yeah, we can hear you, but you've, you're have you using your phone wrong, mic Wrong or input. Yeah. yeah. All right, give me a second. I'm going to log off again. I'll be right back. Um, so the... Uh, yeah, so Porsche announced a hybrid. The new nine, the next generation 911s will be hybrid. They're saying that one will come as soon as this year. I think it was in cars and drivers, something like that. Um, so it's going to be a, the three liter turbo that they've been running uh, with a, like a hundred horsepower, eighty horsepower little uh, hybrid motor. It's not. Excuse me. It's not a plug in. Thanks, hybrid. guys. There it is. Now your audio is working. Um, Good. Yeah, so it's not a plug-in hybrid. It's an internal hybrid, but it adds like nearly 100 horsepower to the car. Um, you know, you look at, but and there won't be a manual one, of course. Um, so that is the future of Porsche. Uh, boy, that makes me want an old car like this one even more when I hear hybrid in a 911. Uh, makes me me- gag a little mental, bit. It makes me mental, throw up in my, ma- your- my throat, mouth a little bit. Mental, can you give me your bid on that car again? Because I missed it when I was one hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars, basically nineteen seventy. Because you know we love to do that cute. That's what we do here. The year I was born. Mm. Anthony right, says, if on. we do get one of those MIG clocks, uh, he'll charge us three times the money to fix it <laughs> so it works. Um, it doesn't have to work. <laughs> yeah, I've Even got though, a real watch, Anthony. I mean, you know, I get a, I, I just need it to look cool. On my, when was the last time have any of you with a nine eleven or a Porsche actually looked ever set their clock on their nine eleven dash? I have in all with all I, the nine I, I, I've I ever con- had constantly. I never set, and one. then I, then I sit there and I look at the clock on the mm-hmm. dashboard and then verify it with my watch. <laughs> While You're I'm sitting in traffic, which key. it does it, yeah, I yeah. know. It, it, and it's, it's a compulsion at this point. I'm like, ooh, clock, ooh, check my watch. Make sure one of them's right. I, I'm an idiot. I know that problem. Well, I mean, <laughs> one thing, if you know, if you have, um, you know, an old 911, is you never touch that uh, trip meter, the little button the for the, uh, the, the odometer yeah. trip meter. Yeah. If you hit that thing, it will wreck it. Um, so if you're new to an old 911, if you've never had one, never push that button. Unless wrote, you want wrote, to replace the odo- have the odometer replaced. I wrote that down. Just yeah, write it down. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing is, like, uh, God, our friends at God and Classic, when I made our TV show, uh, Porsche Road Trip, um, they let me borrow uh, a, I think it was a 993 C4S. And I brought a, a helper on the first part of the trip. And when he got in the car, the first thing I said is like, whatever you do, do not push that button. Like bef- he wasn't even, he didn't even have his seatbelt put in. He's like, what? I'm like, do not push that button ever. He's like, really? I'm like, yes, I'm not kidding. He's like, oh, I'm glad you said that. Cause I was actually going to push it. It just screams <laughs> at you to push that thing. Right. Uh, <laughs> look at, uh, look at, uh, look at switching not the right car. Finding picture. Yeah. That's, that's my, actually my car, but that's right. Yeah, hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions. Like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Heuer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip-top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. Our good friend yes. Yuri in San Francisco sent us this link, uh, and oh my gosh, we all gushed over this car. 1979 11 Coupe with a three liter twin plug in the coolest color. This car is in my hometown, hanging out in Muckleteo, right off of the Puget Sound. Uh, great little ferry dock right down the hill from this car. Uh, this car is truly, truly epic. We were all loving the aesthetic of the car that was built by the the owner this car is was not bought it was built and you gotta hand it to a fella who builds his own car this is a slick top um this engine just looks like a piece of jewelry with the pmos and uh speaking of jewelry you know looking at the interior of this car uh, of course it's got the cool shifter and the steering wheel that just all the right things and it even had uh, like a mig 28 um Clock. Oh yes, that that they can <laughs> the have their clock, own. Yeah. Yes, 
Um, our friends Ross, Anthony yes, at uh, Our Anthony, Smiths yes. can uh, service one of those for you. By the way, Our Smiths uh, in Idaho, uh, they are the servicers of fine watches, fine Swiss repair. If you have a Rolex or Patek Philippe or Tagu or any fine Swiss watch that needs service, send it on up to our good friends at Our Smiths. Uh, you can contact them at OurSmiths.com and they will send out a prepaid shipping package and get your watch up there, take care of it and send it back you good as new uh anthony himself will be servicing that thing and he is the best at it anyways uh this car really i i was so intrigued by this clock i had to go and look look it up i went you know trying to find one and these mig clocks it's awesome because they're mechanical so that you don't have to they fit right in the hole uh on the 911 dashboard uh and it since it's mechanical you don't have to hook it up to anything you know, it doesn't have to be wired. It doesn't have, doesn't need electricity. You wind it up like a mechanical watch, like you would an Omega Speedmaster or something like that. Um, so, and it just, it looks the business. Can you find that picture? Yeah. Look at that thing. That is so sick. What do you guys think of that? Um, yeah, this, I don't know. This What's is, that? This is really cool. And you can tell that a, a build like this, whoever built it was attention to detail and putting those custom unique features and, and, and fixtures in there. Um, they, it really put a lot of time and effort and the design and the thought, and it's the kind of build that, you know, someone spent all of their effort and money and love into, but naturally the question is, does somebody else outside this room <laughs> yeah. appreciate that sort of stuff in a monetary value? And I feel like there's always that big question mark. I mean, obviously this car was built. I mean, I feel like nut and bolt with every care, but how much does that translate into dollars, JP? Yeah, that's a good question. That's what this show is about, right? We make predictions and uh, we had some thoughts. And look, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, we were off. Um, we were, I, maybe, I don't know. Deep said 150 grand. I said 165, 911. Um, let's see here. Was it you Wade that said, uh, 188 and it looks like mental, uh, came in. Let's see here. Mental was the high bidder at 197. We were all talking about how this car we thought would, should bring over 200. And we just um, didn't think the market was there for the, right. the like the, the enthusiast people. Not to mention, uh, you know, being kind of an off time of year. Uh, and the fact that this car doesn't have a name, mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing about built 911s, built air cold cars, is that if it's, you know, if it's like Rod Emery or a singer or, you know, Patrick Motorsports, if it's got a name attached to it, People get excited if it's even if it's a small name like the Flying Hawaiian. People will pay big money. A Flying Hawaiian car, I think, is always is a good example of a car that doesn't have a super huge name, but it's a big enough name. Even though it's a small niche name, it's a big enough name to get the car over two hundred uh, and darn near three hundred. Some of his cars have gone for over three hundred, wow. but his last car, uh, you know, did like two seventy five, and we talked about that. And you can see that episode. Uh, look up the Flying Hawaiians car. Uh, we also did an episode about that on um, Defrostination and the Rami Show. Check that out. Uh, but uh, it turns out we were right. Um, this car did sell. Uh, and I believe I said I would not sell. Like when I when I gave my bid of 165, I basically said I wouldn't sell it for that. Mm -hmm. I, I I think that's a steal, and that would be giving it away. Um, and so I believe someone stole it. This car sold with 28 bids for 160 thousand um, oh. dollars. I think that is stolen, and I wish I had 160 thousand nine hundred eleven to have bit outbid this guy and had this in my garage what do you think of that result wait yeah you know it's tough i think that there were a number of factors that contributed to maybe a 20 percent discount mm. um you know it's definitely the time of year it's definitely where the car is located it's not driving season up in the pacific northwest and it won't be for a while um and like you said it's kind of not a questionable build but a questionable person who is this person who put all this time and effort into this car are there any others like it? Maybe, maybe not. But without that sort of um, history or, or prowess or, or any sort of association with anything well known, it looks great, but there's always questions. At the end of the day, though, I think that beyond the build and whoever sold this, I think that that time of year and probably platform held this car back at least 25K. I think 180 or 185 would have more than likely been the number even at this time of year. And I think, I mean, if he could have 
held out until April or May and put it on bring a trailer, it might have been a $200,000, $225,000 car. It certainly looks that way. Um, but who knows? And I am surprised to see it sell as well, but I mean, maybe they needed it. Maybe they wanted it gone. Maybe it was time. So it is what it is, but it is an absolute steal. I'll tell you that. What do you think of the result mental? I I agree. And, uh, the, it seems that the herd is in with the, it's a steal and it's, it, it, I, we talk a lot on this show about the difference between, you know, collector investment grade cars and then drivers or enthusiast cars. And I feel like because like Wade said, it wasn't this well-known bankable name. This car went for cheap, but the person who bought it, I would almost bet that they did not buy it as an investment because they looked at this attention to detail and there was no question. Oh, if they're willing to do this to lay the bolt and roll cage over the material, and then they still painted the transmission tunnel I can trust this person, but the people that are wanting it as a blue chip investment grade were like, oh, but I need a Rod Emery. I need a Magnus Walker. I need someone attached to it so I could get my money back. So I think this car absolutely 100% was stolen, and it was stolen by the right person who is going to probably drive it and love it. Yeah, I mean, how often do we hear someone say, better than a singer? Can you uh, reset oh, yeah. that? Sorry about that. No worries. Um, you know, or as good as a singer, but for half the price or whatever. I think this is one of those situations where that may actually be true. Hit the uh, info button, too. It looks like uh, we got, uh, got that. Sorry. That's we, all right. Professional, little, professional. Some yeah. technical stuff going on here, guys. Sorry. Got it. The next, the, the next show will be, the next show will be next year. <laughs> <Falling apart. laughs> yeah. I mean, this is one of those cars where, you know, kind of, I mean, look, it's not a singer, um, but better than a singer. You could drive this one. Right. It's for, you know, a 20th of the price. I mean, come on. Or yeah. 20% of the cost of a singer. I, look, I love this car. I would rather buy this, uh, than a singer and then get a fleet of other cool ass cars too. Um, if, if I wasn't married, I would have sold my, I would have sold my house for this. <laughs> right. Uh, and you could live in it, right? Why oh, yeah. not? You can always live in a car. You can't drive a house. So. Oh, my gosh. Anthony says that uh, apparently 727 clocks fit. Oh, yeah. No, stop too. telling people that until I buy one because now they're going to go up like 20 bucks on eBay before I can get <laughs> one and send it to Anthony to mount to my Porsche. Yeah, that's right. In your, uh, in your 914 or are you going to get an yes. air-cooled 911? You get a 911. Both, but yeah, the first one's going in the 914. We got to get one for Mikey because he's building a 912 right now. He has oh, a 76 912. I think I know what Mikey's coming. getting. When, when's Mikey's birthday? We should pull together and get Mikey one for a belated Christmas gift. All right, or Anthony, like you're going to be getting an email from us. But yes, we, yes, that is a perfect 727 a or MiG 29. I kind of like the MiG 29. The 727 thing, I haven't seen the 727 one, but I'm sure it's, you know, very aviation-y, but there's something about that MiG 29 one that's just so Euro and East Block and kind of I, like, I feel like Mikey would appreciate the MiG more. Yeah. I mean, it looks like the car escaped like, you know, Berlin or something like that in the sixties. <laughs> it was East block nine 11 that was caught on the other side of the, uh, the wall there. Uh, were there any nine elevens in East Berlin? I don't know. A little history story there. Um, yeah. Wade. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Usually. Um, speaking of Christmas and how awesome the nerd herd is our good friend, Chris Carbine, uh, sent us some stuff. Did he? He did. So uh, why don't you open that little box that's right in front of you? This here. Okay. This, yeah, gonna, yeah, on the camera there. Um, you have, where, there was I'm that gonna, switchblade that was around. So you can't open that? Are you okay. not strong enough I to? Will, I will use the key. I just don't want to okay. spend 10 minutes ripping oh, it. Oh, look. Mental's already got his out. This is, you know, this Go is. Camera on him. He's this, got it. He's got it. He's got it. This is what no I way. usually do on my own channel, a little unboxing video. Oh, no, no, wait. We, but we've got, we, we, we have cool knives. Oh, don't worry. Cool I, I got it. Too I got late, it. Too late. Oh. So, yeah. Ooh, All right. Hold it up so people can see it. You say you're a professional unboxer well, hey, and people can't Nobody wants see to the see thing. the wrapping. They want to see. Wow, look at that. Look at that. There it is. So that is, uh, I believe, where Chris Carbine visited after he came to see us for Vegas Auto Fest. This is great. Thank you, yes. Chris Carbine. And so thank you for all the I support. Think, I think sure. technically this does make him a sponsor because I was going to say, you know, I speaking know. of people that aren't sponsors but should be. Well, our I actual sponsors sponsor. are going to be pissed off. They're like, wait, I could have gotten a sponsorship with a couple of mugs. Um, we uh, we love you, Chris. Yeah, thank you very great. much. Uh, these are beautiful. awesome. Uh, can we get a shot of my mug here? Not He's, my ugly face, but yeah, I guess my ugly face. Come on. 
Here we go. Uh, Using it like you Chris. should. Yeah. All right. We're going to put some scotch in there. Help yourself to a little right. scotch there. You All got right. some scotch over there on your side there, Mental? Uh, I'm, I'm doing tequila, so we are good. But uh, okay, I think th- I think this is when you take a deep sip and say, hey, what do you guys think of that price? Let's move on to some more cars. Cheers. Cheers. All right. We're going to clink on that. I'm going to take a little sippy sip. Mm. What do you guys think of the results of that amazing 911 with a MiG-29 clock? Was that car stolen like the nerds believe it was? Or do you think that's just what it's worth and that's just the new normal? And air-cooled 911 prices are crashing, 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 crashing. The sky is falling like our friend Michael Deeb seems to think over there at Haggerty. Hey guys, thanks for watching this clip of the Bid Nerds podcast. Play along with us live every Sunday and Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. on YouTube. And see if your bids stack up to the rest of the nerd herd in the chat live. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you on the next episode. Get those nerds!